Hello StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. This is a game between Petit Drogo and Marine Lord on Larillac Crest. In the bottom right side of the map, we have the blue Terran player. It is Marine Lord, representing Millennium Gaming. And in the top left side of the map, we have the red Protoss player. It is Petit Drogo, representing My Insanity. Yes, we have two French players going against each other today. Again, we saw one of these about a couple of weeks ago between these two guys. It seems like they know each other pretty well. I have to imagine if you're a professional player from a country not Korea of StarCraft, you probably know the other guy at some level. Like you probably played in country tournaments enough that you're familiar with them at the very least. And maybe you've gone out, had a couple drinks together too. Who knows? Maybe these guys have a secret Instagram account where they just show all the fun times they have together and they just don't let anybody else see it. All right, so a PVT here on Alara Lack Crest. Again, my second favorite match with StarCraft 2. It's hard to find replays of this sometimes, though. A lot of PVZs, a lot of TVZs, a lot of mirror matchups, too. But man, PVT. I guess maybe the number of P's and the number of T's is just low enough to make this matchup be a little bit rare. Scouting here is Petit Drogo. This is Alara Lack Crest. It is a four player map, so you don't know where your opponent is spawning. And unfortunately for our Red Protoss, his blue Terran opponent is in the bottom right, so it's going to take him a while to scan and scout to get there. Marine Lord is going for a very standard Reaper expand here. Ready, set, Reaper, bam, Reaper on the way. And a one gate expand here from Petit Drogo. There's the gateway and there's the expand. Seems to be a little bit faster than his opponent. I don't know, let's see, 1,000 hit points and 500 and 500, so you'd think... They should build at the same time. I actually don't know this. I wonder if somebody is more knowledgeable than I am could say, but it seems like Petit Drogo is a little bit ahead on this count here. He has a cybernetics core coming already. Marine Lord does not have a factory ready to go or any such thing. This probe might go to try to harass the construction of the supply depot if it wants to be annoying and chooses not to. Maybe instead to harass this command center. No, there's a Reaper here though. Get out. Reaper taking the time to come actually hit this probe, which gives Petit Drogo more time back here to get something up to defend that. He is corner boosting out an adept. That's excellent. And no uh, overlord, or, overlord mothership core yet for Petit Drogo. So I'm not quite sure what the intent is there. Just going to try to handle this Reaper that he knows is coming with an adept, which seems fine. Although, thankfully for him as well, Marine Lord did not scout, does not know where his opponent is, hops in the bottom left, and then will come up here again, just buying some additional time for this adept to happen. And still no mothership core. So Petit Drogo very, has a very specific build order here where he does want to get out his robo facility before he even gets a mothership core. Perhaps knowing that Marine Lord is not known for crazy all-ins that require him to photon recharge pylons on a frequent basis. They can hold off this Reaper with a single Adept. The Adept does three-shot the Reaper, I believe. Let's see, 60 hit points on the Reaper. Adept does 22 damage versus light. Yeah, times three is going to be enough to take it down. But not two, it has to be three. And a Twilight Council. So Robotics Facility and Twilight Council coming out for Petit Drogo. Meanwhile, this factory has just finished and a Starport is on the way. For Marine Lord, income tab for these players, 30 to 25. Petit Drogo really hitting that probe count pretty hard and it's starting to pay off for him as well. Getting a Widowmine with the factory and double pumping Marines is Marine Lord. It would be very strange in a game with Marine Lord for him not to have Marines. Throwing up a defensive bunker that he can salvage at any time to get his money back right here. 75% of his mineral and gas value to salvage and yeah just happily mining there this stalker has the shortest patrol path ever in about three minutes or so it's going to throw up and keep going all right twilight council used to get blink robotics facility used to get an observer because that's the first thing you always do as protoss is get an observer first so useful to have this thing and a third nexus on the way for petit drogo so definitely Trying to out-expand and out-macro his opponent so far. And you know what? It might be working. 38 to 32 supply. Army supply is definitely favoring Marine Lord. But as long as that just sits here in Marine Lord's base, it doesn't really matter. And as I say that, Marine Lord says, Oh, you think I'm one of those players who just sits in my base? It's time to move out with these Marines. And he's going to try to do it too. Observer is going to miss this information, which I feel like would be very, very useful to have. Observer here checking to make sure, giving just giving some warning time for Petit Drogo. As, yeah, Petit Drogo doesn't have anything. He has a Stalker and an Adept. This might be a bad experience for our Red Protoss player. Observer comes in, sees what's going on, sees there's a Liberator coming out there. Based on the fact that there's no Reactor, that would be my guess. And a Factory here, too, with tanks coming out. All right, here comes some Marines. It just seems like a little late for a straight-up Marine push. Especially because Mothership Cores are so good. Ah, Widowmind Drop at the back. Cannon, not a Cannon. Not a cannon. Here comes the Widowmine drop. One. Boo-hoo. 
one and two. How many kills? One and two. Hey, so only three kills on those widow mines. And here comes the marine follow-up. Pushing right on up here. Do they want to take care of that pile? And I think that'd be their target first of all. Mothership core is here. Can it throw down the photon overcharge? The marines don't want to come too far in because then they're trapped by that overcharge. Good scan. Oh, they pick up the observer. Nicely done by marine lord. Well played there. Units tab again. Five stalkers versus 13 marines. I don't think all those marines are here. I think some of them are back down in the base. But a nice little poke from marine lord. Did kill a couple workers. By a couple, I mean four. Uh, no, three. Did kill three. The one kill was from actually up here with the Reaper earlier on. All right, so still no cannons in the mineral lines. I guess Petit Drogo, I mean, do we want to say that was luck? That was luck. The Woodmine Drop didn't kill more of his workers, or did, he, or did he position his probes well enough to prevent a massacre from occurring? That is a mystery. That is a mystery, ladies and gentlemen. Stalkers heading forward here. No upgrades on these guys. Not necessary. Double Forge on the way, so they will be upgraded at some point. But this Liberator with Defender Mode... Get it. Get the Liberator. Yeah, getting right on up there and sniping down that Liberator, losing a Stalker. And that's about it. Trying to take down that bunker to at least force it to start burning. No, going to stay in here and get rid of another Liberator and then blink out. All right. I think keeping a Liberator count low for your opponent is definitely worth a bit of a poke there from Petit Drogo. Resources lost here, 650 versus 900 in favor of the Protoss player. And again, that third base was so much earlier than Marine Lords was. Income tab, 61 to 52, even with Petit Drogo losing four workers throughout this game. Really chrono boosting out that Resonating Glaives upgrade. Did they change that icon? Nah, it's always looked like that. Attack speed of Adepts increased by 45%. Planning to get some Adepts mixed in here. I don't think he has any yet. Uh, he has the one. He made the one, along with two sentries. And a Warp Prism. Woohoo! Warp Prism shenanigans. Here we go. Special tactics on the way as White Raw has coined them. Adept, drop, and warp in on the way. Stalkers going to try to blink on here too. Get some work done. And they do. They blink right on in. Try to get some shots off. Good pull of SCVs though by Marine Lord. Get him right to the corner. All of them managed to survive. The Stalker is going to blink their way out as soon as they can. And they do. Meanwhile, Warp Prism trying to sneak on down here while everybody is distracted and get up into the main base. Oh, here we go. Petit Drogo with the Adepts going to get in here, and there is a missile turret, but dropping the Adepts immediately. They do three-shot SCVs and another Warp and another round of Adepts. Trying to do what damage they can and getting SC or taking out the workers that are building these barracks. Going to delay those pretty darn well. Picking up a couple, sacrificing a couple more to the gods of Marines and Marauders. Going to try to kill as many SCVs as they can before they transfer on out. And they do transfer on out here. SCVs once again running for their lives, losing more and more workers. Another attack down here of Stalkers. Whoa, this harassment, this two-pronged, three-pronged harassment working really well for Petit Drogo. Taking out every single Marine. There's a tank on the high ground doing extra damage versus these Stalkers. But I don't know how much it actually matters. These guys are still alive. Okay, almost still alive. Adept ends up with two kills there too. The Stalkers do want to get the heck on out. War Prism gets just across that ravine. Where the Marines and Marauders cannot follow. Well played indeed. 24 workers killed by Petit Drogo right there. 24 losing some units too, but still fewer than his opponent, Marine Lord. Three base up here for Petit Drogo to 69 to 45 total workers. Looking good for our red Frenchman Protoss player. Looking very impressive indeed. Coming back in for round two with Warp Prism attacks. He's actually keeping Marine Lord on the back foot for the first time. Marine Lord is usually very aggressive and a very good Terran player indeed. But Petit Drogo here, man. Just absolutely keeping him stuck on these three bases. He's forced to leave Marines and Missile Turrets out. He's forced to... I, I mean, nothing up here, I suppose, which might be a problem later. But the Stalkers are just setting up a bit of a contain, allowing Petit Drogo to drop a fourth base of his own. I haven't seen any drops even. From Marine Lord, how many? He has three medevacs, which is good, but I think he feels like he can't afford to actually head out. He needs everybody home to deal with this aggression that is coming so consistently from our Red Protoss player of my insanity. All right, Templar getting into the mix. Two Immortals starting to pop on in. Plus two ground weapons, plus two ground armor, concussive shell. Nope, just kidding. That's uh, Yeah, it is concussive shells <laughs> being researched by the Terran player. More Marines, more Marauders, more Liberators, and an Armory. Getting mixed in two for that plus three, plus three. That is oh so good for Marines and Marauders. So good. The Stalkers finally decide to take down these rocks. So they feel like it is in their best interest to do so. Maybe avoid getting shot at by this tank while they're doing it. That would be nice. And they do manage to take it down. I can't imagine Marine Lord will mount any serious opposition to this. Oh, and he does actually. He kind of faints on in and forces the Stalkers back just a little bit. That cooldown on the blink is seven seconds, which is nice. They can already blink again. 
Should be enough to keep them mobile and safe. Defender mode circles set up just in case Petit Drogo tries to come through here. I don't know that he's planning on it. He's really focused on taking this fourth base, not allowing Marine Lord to get his own. 69 2, 61 harvesters, but I think Marine Lord is a little oversaturated, maybe? Yeah, a little bit there. Not so much there. I guess it was the fact that he lost. How many workers was that again? 24? 24, 24 SCVs killed during that amazing multi pronged harassment by Petit Drogo. Blinking on out again. You can blink and dodge concussive shell attacks from Marauders. They're stemmed up and they catch a. They catch a Stalker. That's the thing with Stalkers, man. They hit hard, but they are fragile. They get hit there by a few Marauders and a few Marines. They will die quickly. This is a lot, though. Blinking on in. Blinking forward is Petit Drogo. Trying to snipe down those Liberators. Getting one. No, not able to get two. Great concave from Marine Lord, but here come the Immortals. Here comes the Storm. Wait, do they have Storm? They have Storm. Yes, Petit Drogo marching right up this front area here. The Liberators trying to set up the Thermo Circles. Dead. Feedbacks on the Medivacs, too. Taking those guys out. No Medivacs to heal these guys up at all. How many are left in this game? None. No Medivacs for Marine Lord. That's a huge stinking deal. And trying to sneak down this way is Petit Drogo with this single Warp Prism. Takes some major hits, but Warps on him here. Gets the Adepts in. Warps in another round of Adepts. These guys have plus two, plus two, and the upgrade with Resonating Glaives. And here comes the army to try to deal with this. Just going to go ahead and Sonic transfer their way to somewhere else. Oh, they got blocked, though, by Marine Lord. But meanwhile, an attack at the front base. Going to finally finish off those rocks. And another attempt, another warp in. As these adepts are holding their own pretty darn well, even with that nerf to their attack. Going to kill a lot of Marines, a lot of Marauders here. The push up to the front. Here we go. Storms on the Liberator. Taking it out. Another couple Liberators trying to set up another big storm on the bio. And taking out the Liberators almost as soon as they can set up that Defender Mode Circle. Another Warp and a Stalker taking out this base here too. Does not look good for Marine Lord at all. But he does have a lot of Marines and Marauders. Plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two. Not quite there yet. I feel like that would help Marine Lord a lot. But not actually in the cards for our Blue Terran player. Archon morphs in the front door. And this gets absolutely killed here. But this third base by Marine Lord is likewise destroyed. Not looking good. Stuck on two bases is Marine Lord down 132 to 99 total supply. Resources killed. Workers killed 44 by Petit Drogo to this point. It's 69 to 41 total workers. Pushing up last stand by Marine Lord. He does have a couple medevacs here. A bunch of tanks too. Tanks pretty good against the Stalkers. If he can get the Stalkers. No, they blink forward. With the Immortals on the back just tearing through everything. 12 kills on that Immortal. And that's it. A GG from Marine Lord. Marine Lord is defeated. Petit Drogo is victorious. And Marine Lord has left the game. Boy, howdy. What an absolutely epic performance there by Petit Drogo. Out-expanded Marine Lord. Out-harassed Marine Lord. Out-straight-up walked in there and just crushed Marine Lord. Upgrades were better. Income was better. Base count was better. And Petit Drogo takes it today. Impressive all the way around. All right, so that's it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter and Facebook, both at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.